This is part two of customary units of length and we're going to focus on using a ruler. One of the most important things that you need to think about when getting ready to use a ruler is to figure out where is the zero on your ruler. Rulers do it two different ways, so let's look at the two ways that your ruler might be labeled. First of all, some rulers start at the end of the ruler, right here at the end. You see that there's no other line showing zero or no other line the same length as the one. So this ruler starts right on the very end of it. And if you were going to measure, let's say, this eraser, you would want to make sure that you lined your eraser up with the very end of the ruler so that you're starting right at the zero. This ruler, on the other hand, has its own zero mark. You can see that it's um, one clue that it's the zero mark besides that there's a zero there, is that it's the same length as the one mark. Sometimes you're going to have a ruler that's measured, that's marked off this way, that doesn't have a zero. And you have to realize that if the line is the same length as the one, that this is where the ruler begins, where it begins measuring. So you're going to have to place your object right at this zero mark, not on the end of the ruler because you'll get an imprecise measurement, but right at the um, zero mark. So remember when you are using a ruler to make sure that you line up the end of your object with wherever zero is on the ruler that you have. It's important to know the parts of an inch. Um, some rulers that you have are going to be marked off in sixteenths, some rulers are going to be marked off in eighths, but either way you have to know what all those lines represent. So I like to think about taking a um, zeroing in, like we've got supervision um, magnification goggles, and here I have one inch, here's the zero, here's the one inch, and we're going to look at each of those parts. I'm going to do the same with this piece of paper here. So this, on my piece of paper, this is the zero mark, and this is the one. So if you take your inch and you fold it in half, then we can find the place on a ruler that represents one half an inch. So on my piece of paper right here in the middle, and this red line on the inch it represents one half of an inch. Now, if I take my half inch and fold that in half, I have now made my ruler, my inch, into four sections. So I open it up and my ruler, whoop, my ruler has four pieces. And each of those pieces we can call a fourth, or when you're talking about inches, you commonly call them quarters. So here's a fourth, another fourth, another fourth, and then the one whole. So if I look for that mark, I can see it's the next shortest line. See how the red is pretty long? The next shortest line is going to be the fourths. So this is like saying zero fourths, then here's one fourth, this is two fourths, three fourths, and then we can rename the one four fourths. And of course, in this case, we wouldn't probably call this two-fourths of an inch. We would simplify it to be one-half, and we can see that those are equivalent. All right, so I have half of an inch, and I have quarters of an inch. And if I take the quarters of an inch and fold those in half, I now my ruler, my inch, is going to have eight pieces. If I open it back up, you can see that it's now folded into eight pieces. So let's try to find the, the eighths on this ruler. It's going to be halfway between the zero and the one-fourth. And you notice that that line is going to be on most rulers a little bit shorter than the one-fourth mark. So this is zero-eighths, one-eighth, two-eighths, which is an equivalent fraction to one-fourth, three-eighths, four-eighths, we definitely know that's a one-half fraction, five-eighths, six-eighths, and seven-eighths, and then finally, the one whole we can also call eight eighths. All right, let's see if I can do this. So I'm going to take my ruler, fold it in half, fold it in fourths, fold it in eighths. And if I was going to fold it again, which is kind of tricky on this piece of paper, but I think I can handle it. Oh, there we go. All right. Now, have you figured out how many I have? Sixteen. So I'm going to open up my ruler. And most rulers are divided into sixteenths of an inch. So this would be, I'm not going to write them all, but we can count them, 1 16th, 2 16th, 3 16th, 4 16th, 5 16th, 7 16th, I miscounted somewhere, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 16th, 8 16th, 9 16th, 10 16th, 11 16th, 12 16th, which if we simplified it, would simplify to 3 fourths. 
13 sixteenths, 14 sixteenths, 15 sixteenths, and 16 sixteenths. So we can see that the ruler in the smallest pieces on this particular one is broken up into 16 pieces. And you could also count the spaces in between the lines and see that the whole is broken up into 16 pieces. I hope that your brain is realizing that even when we measure with a ruler, we're going to have to use fractions. That's a good thing. So let's practice what we just found out, and, or, or use what we just found out to practice measuring several items. I'm going to first of all look at my ruler to um, do two things. Figure out where my zero line is, and since I don't see any other line that's this long, I realize that my zero line is the end of the ruler. So whatever object I measure, I'm going to put right at the end of my ruler. The next thing I need to do is see what um, pieces my, my one hole is broken into. This is one inch, so I want to count to see is this ruler marked off in sixteenths or eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so these, this ruler is marked off into eights, and um, when I measure, I'm going to count in eights to figure out how long each of my objects is. So I'm going to take each one of these pieces over here and measure it to whatever I've been asked to measure it to here. So I'm going to take the yellow, and I'm going to make sure that I place it um, at the very end of the ruler, and then I'm going to measure to the nearest inch. So that's counting to the big lines, and it is closer to one inch than it is to zero inches or two inches. So we're going to say that me when measured to the nearest inch, this is, blown up of course, one inch when measured to the nearest inch. All right, let's take the green one, and I'm going to put it right at the end of my ruler, and this time I'm asked to measure to the nearest half of an inch. So let's find the half inches. Here's one. This would be considered half of an inch because it's two halves. Here's one, here's one, the half an inch, the half an inch. Notice how they're the longer lines. All right, so I have to figure out which of those marks it's closest to. Well, it looks like it's closest to this one. It's closer to the one and one half than it is to one or it is to two whole inches. So this green line was one and one half inches long. Next, when measured to the nearest quarter of an inch, usually we would say quarter of an inch, but fourth of an inch also would work. I'm going to line it up with the beginning of my ruler, and then I need to locate the one-fourth lines. Well, remember this was the half line, so the one-fourth lines or marks are going to be halfway between zero and one-half. So it's going to be these here, one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, and we can see it's really easy to see this time that this purple line is closest to the three-fourths line. Again, one-fourth, two-fourths, or one-half, three-fourths. So this purple line, when measured to the nearest one-quarter inch, is three-fourths of an inch, or three-quarters inch. All right, and finally, the most precise that you're going to be asked to measure normally is to the nearest one-eighth of an inch. And we remembered that this ruler is marked off in eighths of an inch. So I can see that it's past the one hole, so it's going to be one inch and something. And then one little line past the one is going to be one eighth, because this ruler is marked off into eighths of an inch. So this blue line is one and one eighth inch.